was right before the team the team limited Grand Prix. Yep. And so that you know they started out in Cincinnati and eventually they found their way to the Invitational here. And he finds his way untapping. He's playing Esper Control, a deck that you were pretty familiar with. No, so. I'm familiar with, and one thing I'm familiar with is that if, I, if the format's standard, I do not want to be across the table from Reed Duke, and I don't <laughs> care what he's playing. It's like he he just doesn't. Unsurprisingly, Reed went 4-0 yesterday in standard yet again. Um, really just seems to be a master of this format. Thomas went 3-1 in standard. His 4-0 was with his signature Death and Taxes yeah. in Legacy. The deck that he won a Grand Prix with. Did you see Duke upping that Liliana the Veil? It's up to six. He's got a Graft Digger's Cage in play. He plays an Overgrown Tomb on tap. He's tapping a whole lot of mana. There's a Rakdos return going upstairs. Snapcaster Mage here. Baron Olsen. He cannot flash back. He's just got to discard some cards and try to keep that Liliana the Veil under control. Yeah, Liliana. So from an Esper standpoint, one of the reasons why Esper... The difficulties Esper has that uh, Blue White Red does not is its ability to deal with Planeswalkers. It's a lot harder for Esper to get a resolved Planeswalker off mm -hmm. the board. It has to attack it with Restoration Angels for the most part, or maybe play Detention Spheres out of the board. Duke with an Underworld Connections activation, draws a card, plays a land, plays a Thragtus, ups that Liliana, and you see Volson is staring down a very difficult board state here. He's got a Snapcaster Mage, but Duke is far ahead in many different ways, able to draw multiple cards a turn, has a 5-3, and has that Planeswalker ticking up, up, up all day long. Yeah, well, so when you're playing something like Esper that's actually just trying to answer everything, it's really important that you keep the relevant, that you never even let the relevant cards get on the board in the first place. You need to have more counter spells because you have less way of dealing with permanence. There are two cards on the battlefield right now which are bad news when resolved. The first one is Liliana of the Veil. The second one is Underworld Connections. Both of those are really devastating for Esther. You see Duke immediately plays his Stomping Grounds. Now he's going to play and he's going to activate that Underworld right. Connection. Draws Speaking a of Garrett. cards you can't let resolve. Okay. Yeah. They, here's number three and this one's probably worse than all the other ones. Yeah, this might be the backbreaker here for Nvoldson as he's going to draw an Isolated Chapel. He's going to extend the hand and Reed Duke is going to move on to eight and one. And you can't beat him when he's playing Jund apparently. Yeah. 5-0 in standard, just, just no surprise. No surprise. We talked about it yesterday. We'll talk about it some more today. Said, deck me, familiarity is key. It's not even deck familiarity. Was it? Was it last? I I, I want to say in the last year he's won three standard GPs. Um, I, I mean, mean he won Miami. He won Miami and, and Charleston. Yes, that's true. And I believe there was one in Texas. Yeah, I mean, he's top eight at three because he top eight at back to back. He top eight right. at Charleston. He didn't win them. Both. He didn't right. win them all. Yeah, he top, top eight at Charleston. He top eight at San Antonio, and then he won Miami. Okay. So, yeah, he does three, pretty three well. Three standard, standard GP top eight. Yes, he does yeah. pretty well in the standard format. And all of those.